Okay, sir, everything is fine. You can start. Okay, thank you, sir. A very good afternoon. Today we will discuss about insect pest of rice. Today we will discuss about insect pest of rice. So first we will discuss about some important points which are related to rice crop, which are related to rice crop. So what is the scientific name of rice? Please respond, Amma. What is the scientific name of rice? Uraiza sativa. Yes, explain. What about family? What about family? Poesi or Brahmin. Yes, Poesi. So rice is the stable food of at least half of the world population and is grown in approximately 158 metric tons of land globally. So nearly 90% of this area falls in the Asian region only. So Asian in the sense, Indian regions, India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh. So nearly 90% of this area fall in the Asian region only. So next one more important point. So in 1960, so in 1960, International Rice Research Institute was established. International Rice Research Institute was established and located at Manila, Philippines, or Las Banos. So in 1969, so like that only in 1967, the Central Rice Research Institute, which was established and located at Katak, established and located at Katak only. So in 1965, the Indian Rice Research Institute was established and located at Hyderabad. So you can remember these three institutes and locations because in case of ICR examination, so they will ask this bit. So like that only in 2018, International Rice Research Institute, South Asia Regional Center was established at Varanasi. International Rice Research Institute, South Asia Regional Center was established at Varanasi. So in case of India, so India holds second rank in case of rice production. So India holds second rank in case of price production. At present, ICR is researching on ZBNF on wheat and basmati rice. So at present, ICR is researching zero budget natural farming means ZBNF on wheat crop and rice, basmati rice. So like that only protein rich rice varieties is there. So those are CR down 310 and CR down 311. So CR down 310 and CR than 311. So these are protein rich rice varieties. Protein rich rice varieties. So the major pesticide consumption or application are found in rice only, Emma. Paddy or rice, when it's followed by cotton. Major pesticide application are found in rice crop only. So AP, or AP is the state top in contributing to 45% of pesticide consumption in India. So Andhra Pradesh. Andhra Pradesh is 
top state contributing to 45% of pesticide consumption in India. So last one more point, the international year of price is 2004. So you can remember these important points because in case of ICR examination, so they will ask these type of big international year of price. So 2004. So that's all about the introduction of price from. So let's move on our topic, insect pest of price. Insect pest of price. So there are so many insects which will attack on rice crop. Those are yellow stem borer or stem borer, gall meat, brown plant hopper, green leaf hopper, tispa, leaf folder, and here head bump. So these are the major pests. And some minor pests like grass hopper, rice blue beetle, root weevil, swimming caterpillars, rice tispar, climbing cutworm, case from Old maggot, leaf mite, and sand skill mite. So these are some minor pests. So first we will discuss about stem borers. First we will discuss about stem borers. First we will discuss about stem borers. So there are so many stem borers is there, so which will attack on rice crop. So there is a yellow stem borer. First one yellow stem borer. Next striped stem borer. We can also call it Asian rice borer. So we can also call it Asian rice borer or striped stem borer. Scientific name Kylosaprasali. Scientific name Kylosaprasali. So next another stem borer, pink stem borer. So we know that ragi stem borer. So we can also call it ragi stem borer. Pink stem borer or ragi stem borer. Scientific name Chesamia inferens. Scientific name Chesamia inferens. So like that only white stem borer is there. White stem borer. So, Cisco father in no later. Cisco father in no later. And finally, one more borer is the dark headed borer. Dark headed borer. So, scientific name Kylo polychrysa. Kylo polychrysa. So, these are different types of stem borers so which will attack on rice crop. So, major one is YSPN. YSPN in the sense yellow stem borer. So, it's the most predominant species distributed throughout the country. So that's why first we'll discuss about yellow stem borer only. So YSP, yellow stem borer. We can also call it rice stem borer. So you can see here, this is the scientific name. Scientific name, Circophaga insaculus. Circophaga insaculus. So family, pyrolidae. Family, pyrolidae. Order, Lepidoptera. Order, Lepidoptera. So lepidopterans were divided into two suborders, those are monotrysia and diprysia. So lepidopterans were divided into two suborders, those are monotrysia and diprysia. So most of lepidopteran species up to 97%. So they can come under suborder diprysia, diprysia, diprysia only. 97% of lepidopteran species, so they will come under suborder Dietrichium only. So di means two. So two force is there. Di means two. So there are two forces present. So copulatory pore on eight abdominal segment. Ninth abdominal segment, egg pore is there. So two force is there. One pore on eight abdominal segment, copulatory pore. So like that only ninth abdominal segment, they contain egg guide and egg guide are egg pore. So dietrichium. So monotrysia means single, mono means single, means single pore is there. So in case of similar, so only single pore is there. So based on that force, lepidopterans was divided into two suborders. Those are monotrysia and diprysia. Okay, next, family, family pyrolidae. So what is the specific character of family pyrolidae? Specific character of family pyrolidae. So you can see this picture. So this is the adult of yellow stem borer, adult. So specific character means you can see these mouth parts. This is snoutum, so snoutum. So labial pulpi, you can remember this word, labial pulpi. Where it will locate? So it will locate on mouth parts. So mouth parts, upper labrum is there. So lower lip you want to call as labium. So labium again divided into three parts. So the pre-mentum, mentum, submentum. So this matter we will discuss in later on. 
to list the platelets. So their labial pulpi is there. So these lab those labial pulpi they can modify into snout-like structure. So you can see here, this is the snout. So that is the specific character of the animal pyrolidum. Pyrolidum. So next one. So these yellow stem borers are monophagous. It means they can feed on only rice crops. So monophagous. And very, very, very important bit so in case of high share examination. So, which one of the following is the monophagous? So, they will ask like that. So, monophagous means cellular stem borer. You can remember these points. So, next, identification character or biology or life cycle of cellular stem borer. So, you can see here this is adult. So, from these adults, we can get the eggs. From these adults, we can get eggs. So, from these eggs, we can get caterpillars. You can get the caterpillars. So from these caterpillars, we can get pupa. We can get pupa. So pupa again from pupa, we can get the adult. So this is the life cycle. So it can continue throughout the throughout the year. So from adult, first one adult. So from these adults, we can get the eggs. So from these eggs, we can get the caterpillars. So it's an lepidoptera. So that's why we want to call as caterpillars. So if it is coleopteran, we want to call as grub. So based on that order, we want to call some some names is there. So in case of diphtherians, we want to call as maggots. In case of diphtherians, we want to call as maggots. So it's an lepidopteran, so that's why we want to call as caterpillars. We want to call as caterpillars. So first we will discuss about identification characters of adultum. So identification characters of adultum. So how it look like? So adult. So how it look like? So this is the four wings. So four wings. So four wings are yellowish brown in color. So yellowish in color. So four wings are yellowish in color. And two black spots are present on the four wings. So you can see here two black spots, one and two. Two black spots are present on four wings. So two black spots are present on two wings, four wings. So these are the specific characters of adult. So these are the specific characters of adult. So it's a moth because it's a pyralide. So pyralide is a moth. So the female moth has yellowish brown coving. Yellowish brown coving. And two black spots are present on coving. So anal end having plucked off yellowish shape. So this is coastal region, this is epical region, and this is anal region. So these region they contain yellowish shape. Yellowish shape. So these are the identification characters of adult. So from these adults, we can get the eggs. So from these adults, we can get eggs. So that's why we want to call as cyta pole position or egg laying. So fecundity or fecundity, egg laying capacity of female, we want to call as fecundity. So cyta pole position or egg laying. So where she will lay eggs? So she will lay eggs on if on the upper surface of tender leaves. So if on the upper surface of tender leaves. Cyta pole position, cyta pole position or egg lay if on so if on upper surface of tender leaf. So from these eggs we can get the caterpillars. So after hatching of eggs we can get the caterpillars. So if these caterpillars will cause damage to stem cells. So adults they will not cause damage to stems. Only caterpillars they can cause damage to stems. So caterpillars, how it looks like. So it is a creamish whitish in color and dark brown head is there. You can see here, dark brown head is there. And prothoracic shield is there. So prothoracic shield. So these are the characters of caterpillars. The newly hatched caterpillars or larva, so it's a pale white with dark brown head is there and prothoracic shield is there. So they hang down by silk thread and they enter leaf sheet and feed on green tissue. It can feed on green tissue. So usually one larva is found in one stem. So only one larva is found in one stem. So next, matter. We already discussed this matter. So you can see here, female moth has bright yellowish brown coving with a clear single black spot. On. So black spots are present on covings only. So an anal end having tucked off yellowish shade. So these are the specific characters of adult only. Okay. But in case of male, pale yellow and spots on the forewings are not clear, not clear. But in case of female, 
so it will be clear but in case of men it's not not clear so next the site of pole position or edling so you can see here sex are lay near the tip on the upper surface of tender leaf if on upper surface of tender leaf so you can remember this point also site of pole position so after hatching of these eggs you can get the caterpillar so the newly hatched larva so which are pale white with dark brown head and prothoracic shield is so we already discussed with this point okay next damage symptoms so damage symptoms so in case of vegetative stage so in case of vegetative stage so dead heart system so like that only in case of reproductive stage white hair system so you can remember these two points vegetative stage dead heart reproductive stage white hair so you can see these pictures so dead heart at vegetative stage which turn brownish brownish curls and rise up so like that only white ears at heading stage this empty or partially filled grains this empty or partially filled grains so next one site of oviposition position we know that one presence of red marker near the tips of tender leaf blade so next activity of moth so it's a moth so that's why activity in the vicinity time or evening hours or early morning hours next presence of frost at the feeding site so caterpillars they will feed on the stem so then that's why they it can excrete excreta is there so it can excrete some excreta so that's why we want to call it frost we will find that in the feeding site so these are the damage symptoms caused by ysp yellow stem borer ysp yellow stem borer okay next coming to the management so site of preparation it will site of preparation it will take place within the stem only site of preparation it will take place in stem only so that's all about biology or life cycle or identification characters of yellow stem borer so let's move on management so management so what type of management practices we want to follow under field condition against these yellow stem borer so first point cultural practices harvesting of crop close to soil surface why want to follow these practices because site of preparation so site of preparation it will take place in the stubble or stem only so that's why want to follow these management practices harvesting of crop close to soil surface plowing is there flooding the field after harvest so to kill the hibernating larva stage so in case of a deer spread or some books so they mentioned a hibernation in pupa stage so but in case of some books so then mentioned about hibernating in larva stages so mostly larval hibernating is correct only so you can remember this root concept larval stage hibernating is there so next one clipping the tips of seedling so clipping the tips of seedling because site of oe position she will lay eggs on tip of the leaf blade so that's why you want to follow these management practices clipping the tips of seedling next one, resistant varieties resistant varieties we want to use resistant varieties as the seedling root dip with chlorophyll for seedling seedling root dip with chlorophyll for next physical physical controls physical controls like light trap thermon trap so for monitoring the pest but in case of some books they mentioned under mechanical control but these light traps and thermon trap sometimes they will come under physical only physical so next collection and elimination of egg masses mechanical control collection and elimination of egg masses mechanical next biological control system bio bio means living organism so we want to use living organism for the control of another living organism so this is called as bio control or biological control so it includes egg parasite larval parasite pupal parasite and predator is also there egg parasites we know that one trichogramma so larval parasites we know that one bracon tenensis bracon species pupal tetracycles okay and predators is also there next you can see here so etls then very very important in case of icr examination etls or ars net or ars net so in case of those exams so they will ask this type of question so what is the etl of yellow stem borer economic threshold level. so first what is meant by etl 
so etl in the sense population density means group of numbers population density so at which control measures should be applied control measures should be applied to prevent increasing pest population from reaching the economic injury level so that is the definition of etl so in case of not say one egg mass or one mass per one meter square but in case of main crop one egg mass or one mass per meter square so these are the etls of yellow stem borer okay so finally chemical controls chemical control in case of not say we want to apply carboxyphiran 3g granules or chlorpyrifos carboxyphiran or chlorpyrifos so in case of main fields we want to apply chlorpyrifos phosphoamidon or ethyl or phosphohydrochloride so you can remember these chemicals phosphohydrochloride so this is specific for yellow stem borer so phosphohydrochloride okay these are the management practices we want to follow under field conditions against yellow stem borer yellow stem borer okay that's all about yellow stem borer let's move on another test Let's move on another pest. So rice gall mage, second pest, rice gall mage. This is also one of the major pests in case of rice. In case of rice. So rice gall mage, scientific name, Australia varieta. Scientific name, Australia varieta. So family, Cecidomida. Family, Cecidomida. Cecidomida, order Diptera. Order Diptera. So Diptera, it comes under Exotergota, exotergota. So diptera, it was divided into three suborders. Those are nematocerum, brachycerum, and cyclorum. Dipterans was divided into three suborders. Those are nematocerum, brachycerum, cyclora. Okay. So these cecidomidae comes under suborder nematocerum. So suborder nematocerum. Cecidomidae means gall midges. So gall midges, wherever you can find these gall midges, always comes under system midge. Gall midge means family system midge. You can remember this point. System midge. So next, specific character of family system midge. Specific character of family system midge. So it means chest bone. You can remember this word, chest bone. And so antenna and legs are longer in case of these system midge. So antenna and legs are longer. and chest bone it means a dark sclerotized area the dark sclerotized area is present mid ventrally on the prothorax of maggots on the prothorax of maggots so these are the specific characters of family cecidomidae family cecidomidae okay next so this rice gall mite is an endemic pest so it's an endemic pest so in case of icr examination mm -hmm. So they will ask about the ETL, ETL of ETL of rice gall mite in endemic area. So ETL is two galls for one, two galls for one day, two galls. Okay. So endemic in the sense, so occur regularly and confined mostly to a particular area or locality. So that is called as endemic. So it can occur regularly. This this rice gall mite. Occur regularly and confined mostly to a particular area or locality. So this is called as endemic. Endemic. Next, biology or life cycle or identification character of rice gall mite. Biology or identification character or life cycle of rice gall mite. So you can see these pictures. So this is the adult. So it look like mosquito. So it look like mosquito. So fly is mosquito like. And reddish. These are the characters of rice gall mite product. So it can fly means it can dipterin. So that's why we want to call it fly. So fly is look like mosquito, mosquito like. And bright orange red abdomen is there. And telescopic body is also there. Okay. Next site of ovary position or egg lay. So from these others she will lay egg. Where she will lay? She will lay egg on leaf blade or leaf sheath. So leaf sheath or leaf blade. Type of pole position or egg laying or fecundity. Fecundity in the sense egg laying capacity of female. So she will lay egg on leaf sheath or leaf blade. After hatching of these eggs, we can get the maggots. So these are the maggots because it's an diptera. So that's why life cycle includes maggots. 
So adult is there, egg is there, maggot is there, two parts is there. So it's an diptera. So that's why we want to collect maggots. So these are the maggots. After hatching of eggs, we can get the maggots. So these maggots is a podus. A podus in, in the sense legs are absent. A podus. A means absent. Poda means legs. So legs are absent. So it can move down to the shoot at a without boring into plant fish. So it can not boring into plant fish. So it can feed at the base of apical meristem and finally it can cause damage to apical meristem. So finally it can cause damage to apical meristem. So you can see these matter. So we already discussed with this matter. So it can fly. So fly is much so like and female has bright orange red abdomen is there. Light orange red abdomen and telescopic body is there. Reddish telescopic body is there. So next site of whole position or egg lay. The eggs are laid singly or in groups only. So on leaf blade or leaf sheet on the site of whole position or leaf blade or leaf sheet. So next after hatching of these eggs, you can get the maggot. So maggot, which is a pale reddish or a podus. A podus means absence of legs. Absence of legs. So finally, it will feed on apical meristem. So it can suppress the apical meristem, and finally, it can cause silver shoot. So dam damage symptoms. Damage symptoms. So what type of damage symptoms are caused by these rice crawlers? Gall midges and rice crawlers. The first one, hollow, whitish to pale green cylindrical tubes like tillers. So we want to call it. Gall or silver shoot or onion shoot. So onion shoot in the sense. So in case of rice fruit, it looks like onion shoot. So that's why I want to call it onion shoot. So onion shoot. You can see here. This is onion shoot. Okay. This is also silver shoot or gall or onion shoot. Okay. So vigorous subsidiary tillering. So it's infestation in case of early growth period and vigorous subsidiary tillering is also there. So gall is a modified uh, leaf shape. So gall is a modified leaf shape. So just you can remember onion shoot or silver shoot or gall. So it was caused by rice gall mist or silly arborizer set down middle. Okay. So next one. Pupation. Pupation. So pupation is at the base of the gall mist. At the base of the gall mist. Site of pupation. So at panical initiation stage. So these maggots. Cannot cause damage. So at panical initiation stage, it will not cause damage. So only early stages only it can cause damage. At the middle region, it can cause damage. So these flies get active at the onset of monsoon. So monsoon, whenever monsoon is there, then these flies will be active. So alternate hosts are crops. Alternate which is also there. So the cynodon, really cyn, are panicum. So these are alternate hosts. Or alternate weeds of rice gall mix. So find next one management. Management. So what type of management practices we want to follow under field condition against these rice gall mixes? So first we want to avoid late transplanting. So in case of endemic areas means so restricted to one area or locality. So endemic areas. So in case of those endemic areas, we want to avoid late transplanting. We want to follow early planting in case of curry season. So next, selection of resistant varieties or biotypes. So number of biotypes in rice gall mix is seven. You can remember this point as number of biotypes in rice gall mix is seven. Okay. So seedling group is with chlorophyll for. So it is also uh, with this point we'll discuss then rice crop right. Yellow stem borer also. So number of biotypes in rice gall mix is seven. Next ETLs, ETLs, economic threshold level. So in case of nursery, one gall per meter square. So in case of main crop, five percent affected to less is there, or one gall per one kilogram. But in case of endemic areas, two galls per one meter square, two galls per one kilogram. So in case of endemic areas. Okay, next chemical controls. Application of granules in case of nut tree. So in case of nut tree, we want to apply granules, carboferrin free tree granules. So like that only application of granules in the main field. So in case of nut tree as well as main field. So these are the management practices we want to follow under 
see the condition against the price call which is so that's all about the management practices of price call which so let's move on another test the brown plant copper brown plant copper bph brown plant copper scientific name nela parvata lucent scientific name nela parvata lucent family delphacid family delphacid order hemiptera order hemiptera so hemipteran was divided into two suborders those are homopteran and heteropteran homopteran and heteropteran so these delphacidae comes under suborder homopteran suborder homopteran so next specific character of family delphacidae specific character of family delphacidae so large mobile flattened spur so large mobile flattened spur is present at the end of hind tibia so can remember this point so large mobile spur large mobile flattened spur is present at the apex of hind tibia only spur in the sense in case of a body wall external structure so body wall acts cuticular appendages and cuticular processes there so see test for macro trachea micro trachea is there so we will discuss later these topics so that is called as spur so this large mobile mobile means movement is there large mobile flattened spur is present at at the end of fine tibia so these are the specific characters of family delphacidae so bph next biology or life cycle or identification characters of brown plant copper or nela parvata lucent so you can see here so these hemipterans they will come under subdivision exotergotum so hemiptera comes under, comes under subdivision exotergotum so exotergota in the sense pupal stage is absent the first stage is absent in exotergotum so it means in case of life cycle so they contain adult adult eggs named sisterum the pupal stage is absent in this exotergotum so that's why in case of life cycle of hemipteran there is pupal stage absent so first stage is absent so life cycle in that sense first adult so you can see here adult so how it look like adult So in case of a dorsally, it is brown in color, but in case of ventrally, in the sense opposite, deep brown. So deep brown in ventrally, brown brown is dorsal. So these females, so which can exist in two forms, those are fully winged macropterus and truncated winged brachypterus, short wings and long wings. So brachypterus, macropterus. So these are the characters of order of BPH brown plant of color. So piercing and sucking type of mouth parts is there because it's an hemipteran. So that's why piercing and sucking type of mouth parts is there. So in case of bug, in case of bug, number of stylus is four only. But in case of dipteran, it's much so number of stylus is. So anyway, these topics we will cover under morphology courses. So piercing and sucking type of mouth parts. Is. So next, site of oviposition. position. So from these adults, you can get the eggs. Eggs are site of oviposition or egg laying. So she will lay eggs in within parenchyma test tissue of the plant or midrib of the leaf. So of midrib of leaf. So within parenchyma test tissue plant along the midrib of leaf site of oviposition or egg laying or fecundity whatever it may be. So those are so many. After hatching of eggs, we can get the nymphs. So we can get nymphs. Here, here it is the nymph. So the difference between adult and nymph is wing pads. So in case of nymph, wing pads is there, but in case of adult, wings fully developed is there. So these are the difference between nymph and adult. So both nymphs and adults they will have piercing and sucking type of mouth parts. So you can see here these are all brown plant hoppers only. So BPH brown plant hopper, nila brown pollution. So both nymphs and adults so they will suck sap from these plants. So these plants. So you can see here we already discussed this point. Adults is brown dorsally and deep brown ventrally. So eggs to site of oil position are egg laying. So within parenchyma test tissue of the plant or midrib of the leaf. So these brownish nymphs it, it can undergo five instars this day. So instars this day. So both nymphs and adults so they will suck sap from basal portion of the plant. So they will suck the vessel portion of the plant. So at that time, it can inject 
toxic saliva so while feeding they can inject toxic saliva so finally we can get hopo brown hopo brown so you can remember these pointers so leaf hoppers or bph brown plant hoppers so always they can produce to hopo brown hopo brown symptoms next symptoms or damage symptoms caused by this nilo protolution so you can see these pictures the premature yellowing of leaves and drying of plants in isolated circular isolated circular patches so you can see here so premature yellowing of leaves in circulated patches so like that only drying of plants spread in a circular fashion so you can see here circular fashion so it will spread the first and shooting mold development is there and exigua means excreta you can find at the base of plants only so affected some So it can turn soft and unfit for use at this time. So soft purpose it will not use. Okay. So there is no site of preparation because it's a hemisterium. So BPH it can act as vector for. So BPH it can act as vector for grass stem and ragged stem viruses. So it can act as vector for. So vector for grass stem and ragged stem viruses. So number of biotypes in. BPH is four. So number of biotypes in brown plant hopper is four. But in case of rice gourd, it's seven. You can remember these biotypes. So next management. So management practices. So what type of management practices we want to follow under field condition against these BPH? So first we want to avoid monoculturing. So we want to avoid monoculturing of susceptible varieties. Next, we want to use resistant varieties. So, cultural practices like mono, we want to avoid polo, mono culture, mono culturing of susceptible varieties and resistant varieties. Our seedling root is glorified for. Next, you can remember one more point: formation of early waste. You can remember this point. So, these are the specific management against BPH. Formation of early waste or pathways of 20 centimeter width per. Every two meters of planting to facilitate aeration. So why you want to do these hilly base in field? Because aeration purpose, aeration purpose, or light at base spraying purposes, or monitoring and other form of pressures. So that's why we want to. That's why we want to follow these hilly base in main field. So drain the field during the middle of the season. We can suppress the pest population. Drain the field. So draining of field. Next, bio control, conservation of natural enemies. So we want to apply bio controls like a parasite, adult parasite, aquatic bugs, coccinella leaf, mirid bugs. So mirid bugs, scientists name Cetorhina libidpenis. Cetorhina libidpenis. And finally, chemical control. Finally, chemical control, foliage spray. So foliage spray with acetate or imidacloprid. Then neonicotinoids. Similar to the hormonoprotocol, hormonoprotocol. So that's all about management practices of BPH. And finally, last one, rice green leaf hopper. Rice green leaf hopper. Rice green leaf hopper. Find fitness. Nephotidic microbiotic and nephotidic viruses. So there are two genuses there. There are two genuses there. Those are nephotidic microbiotic. Nephotid virus. The family Cicadellidae. Family Cicadellidae order Hemiptera. So Hemipterans, we know that one divided into two suborders. Those are Homopterans and the Heteropterans. Homopterans and Heteropterans. So these Cicadellidae comes under the border Homoptera only. The next specific character of family Cicadellidae. Specific character of family Cicadellidae means hind tibia. So it will have double row of spines. So hind tibia in the sense you can see these are the legs, obsa, trochanter, femur, tibia, tarsus, obsa, trochanter, femur, tibia, tarsus. So in case of the tibial region, hind tibial region, so they will have double row of spines, double row of spines. So these are the specific characters of family Cicadellidae. So leaf hopper is different, brown plant hopper is different. So BPH. Family Delphosidae, but leaf hoppers family Cicadellidae. So you can remember these two points. Don't confuse. So next biology or life cycle or identification characters of 
bright green leaf over here. So there are two genus is there. First one Nepotidix microfitter. Second one Nepotidix square center. So in case of Nepotidix microfitter, two black spots you can see here. Two black spots are present on coding. Two black spots in the leaf. So which can extend up to the black distal portion. Which can extend up to black distal portion in case of Nepotidix microfitter. But in case of Nepotidix viridin, there is no extension. So there is no extension of these black spots. So there is no extension. But in case of an apotidic microfitter, so these two black extend up to the up to black distal portion of the foveal. So these are the leaf opus. So that's why it will have piercing and such type of mouth part. Adults, she will lay eggs on a site of oil position. So she will lay eggs on under the epidermis of leaf sheet. Under the epidermis of leaf shell, height of oil position or egg laying. So after hatching of these eggs, we can get the nymph. So we can get the nymph. So these nymphs, so it look like adult, except a wing band. Wing band is there, wing band is there. So both nymphs and adults, they will suck sap from the plant because they will have piercing and sucking type of mouth part. So with the help of these piercing and sucking type of mouth part, so they will suck sap from the leaves. So damage symptoms. So we already discussed this matter. So nephrotidic microfitter. So it will have two black spots in case of male, which extend up to the black distal portion of the foreskin. So in case of male, black tinge along anterior margin of the nose. But in case of nephrotidic viridin, the black spot in case of male do not extend up to black distal portion of the foreskin. So these are the difference between microfitter and viridin. But nephrotidic viridins can cause more damage to rice than nephrotidic microfitter. Nephrotidic viridins cause more damage to rice. So both nymphs and adults they will suck sap from you. So damage symptoms. Damage symptoms. Yellowing of terminal tissue. Yellowing and stunting or withering of plants. So like that only leaves it can cause brown with small scratch like mark. So uniform yellowing from mid half of the leaves. So these are the damage symptoms caused by by spring leaf opus. Yellowing, leaf turning brown, uniform yellowing from mid half of the leaf. So mid half of the leaf opus. Okay, these are the damage symptoms. So there is no pupil stage. So there is no pupil stage in leaf opus. So so these leaf opus it can act as or it can transmit rice dog, rice yellow dog, rice transmittery yellowing, rice tungrum. So it can act as a rice tumor, but in case of a BPH brown plant or brown plant opus, so it can act as vectors of grass system and ragged plant viruses. But in case of a green leaf opus, it can act as vector organism rice tumor, rice tumor. So and finally, management, the so management practices. So early clipping of infested leaf, so to prevent virus transmission. We want to prevent virus transmission because it can act as vectors. So that's why we want to prevent these viral transmission. Next, removal of leftover nasty. So after completion of transplanting, so then we want to remove whatever plants in the nursery. So like that, only removal of alternate host during off season. So because it can act as alternate host. So that's why we want to remove these alternate hosts. So seedling root this is closed for us. It's a common step against. Rice stem borer or rice gall mills, BPH and leaf opus. So ETLs, economic pressure level. So in case of nursery, one to two opus per meter square. So in case of tailoring, ten per one hill. So in case of heading, twenty per hill. So like that only tungro endemic area, tungro endemic area, one per one hill, one per one hill. So and finally chemical controls. So chemical controls, monoprotopus or dichlorophyll. Monoprotopus or dichlorophyll. So that's all about today's lecture. So remaining topic we will discuss in next class. So if you have any doubt, you can ask me. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Topic over, sir. 
Okay, students, uh, the, that's all for today's class. If you have any questions or queries, you can ask now. It's time for discussion. Yes. So in case of rice soil mix, number of biotypes is seven. Number of biotypes is seven. But in case of some books, they wrote six is wrong. So only seven is correct. So like that, only number of biotypes in BPH, four. Okay, thank you. Again, we will meet on next class. Thank you. Okay, students, that's all for today's class. And uh, Let's give your feedback in the chat box. Okay, sir, I am leaving now. Okay, okay, sir, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Some students were asking about nematology. Uh, we will we will inform my if, if there is any we will inform furtherly we will inform. Is there any other classes? Okay, students. If you have uh, no more, if you have any suggestions or any queries regarding with teaching, you can leave your comment, or if not, you can leave the channel. Oh, sorry. What is this FMP? Can you expand? What is this FMP? Full form, please. So, any class window blank. Oh yeah, farm power and machinery. Yes, yes, yes. That, that will be taken care by engineering uh, subject. You, you will get it. Actually, this, this is actually this is a, for each and every subject we are giving demo class today is entomology. Yeah, someone asked when will be the registration. Here is the thing. You can uh, coordinate with that particular number. Just now we have posted. Any queries regarding with this our academy 
or we need to I, I hope you have gone to many demo classes if you have any if you want to more any any other additions we'll try to add it Oh, you're from foreign students, Mila. Okay, good. Uh, you're, you're a foreign student, right? I think you have some back. Can, can I know from which national you are? Fiji Islands. Okay, good, 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 good. Uh, uh, regarding ICR system, uh, I think there is some special privilege for the foreign students because uh, in India, yeah, uh, regularly we, we will take some neighboring countries like Nepal and Bangladesh. Some students will join in ICR systems. I hope you two have uh, some some entry, uh, but you have you have to get more much marks and everything. Hopefully for ICR higher studies. I think uh, can I know which grade you are? I mean. What is your position in education? Oh, P P S C. Okay, okay. Very nice to nice to meet. Anyhow, welcome to our uh, Indian teaching methodology. Anyway, ma, uh, Riga, you can you can you can come to India. You can you can read. You can but you should write some entrance exam for uh, ICAR, Indian Council of Agriculture Research. Oh, you are in India, right? I think you are doing BSc in India. CC, oh, CCH, okay, okay, I got you. I got you. I tell you. you doing your internship okay so uh, so now you are present you are in a bsc if you if you want to get to get back to any other higher studies in india like pg and for msc definitely there is a special privilege for the foreign students in icr system because uh, we have we most of the for india uh, we are we are most icr is taking students from vietnam vietnam from vietnam also we are getting some students and some nepal bangladesh even some South African countries also some students were coming. Hope it will be very useful to you. Based on your subject interest, if you are interested in a particular subject, you can join in that particular subject. We will we will train in full manner, and all each and every subject will be dealt by the subject specialist person. So hopefully you will get a better information, and you have a special privilege in India also. Thank you. This time means, uh, did you attend any JRF? Yes, yes, uh, be, uh, okay, before answering to you, I'm, I'm answering for this uh, foreign, foreign million or Tina, something. Anyway, anyway, ma, please, please be in contact with us. And uh, happy, we be happy with our country, India. We will, our country is always welcome your people from foreign country. Thank you. Uh, regarding yes 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 the, uh, regarding another student we are asking here yes the pattern was so much changed because agriculture education is going lot of transformations in the past five six years a um, lot of changes having we are giving more emphasis on general agriculture also so you should be careful in that based on that pattern only we will change our method of, method of teaching Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Milena. Um, I'm sorry if I'm if I'm pronouncing your name somewhat short, uh, improper. Please don't mind it. I can. I've been calling as Mila. Thank you, ma'am. Anyhow, students. I hope if there there is no more queries, I think shall we end up the session? Shall we end up the session? 
Yes, please. Okay. Thank you.